So as you guys all know, I love Suicide Squad. It's my favorite movie of all time. It has no flaws. It makes total sense. I watch the movie every single day. But you see, here's the thing. A lot of people online for some reason just didn't like Suicide Squad. So in truth, the storytelling here is very poor. It's a very choppy film. There are entire things that just feel ripped out and left on the cutting room floor. It was, it was shockingly awful. That's how I described Suicide Squad when I came out of the theater. The editing was shockingly awful. Strike three for DC. It's a sloppily written, horrifically edited, boring, predictable, meaningless mess. You and I both know that these people are just paid off by Disney to dislike the movie. I mean, why else would anyone hate Suicide Squad? Definitely not because it's a bad movie or anything like that. But recently, something happened. James Gunn. Oh no! A very untalented and terrible director who made the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, which we all know suck. So anyways, James Bum decided to make a movie that supposedly fixed all the non-issues with Suicide Squad. And now it's out and I finally got to see it. And I could say without a doubt that the movie is a slap in the face to all of us OG Suicide Squad fans. All three of us. The Suicide Squad is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's right up there with other terrible movies like The Dark Knight, The Empire Strikes Back, The Original Lion King. Yeah, those movies suck. Suicide Squad is objectively better than those movies. Suicide Squad is objectively better than The Suicide Squad. And I have six reasons why. I know this might seem small, but hear me out. I just love how Suicide Squad looks. It has this very dull look to it where everything looks grayish and brownish. I love that there's no color because that means everything looks flat and bland. Put it simple, this is the most gorgeous film ever made. The James Bum movie, for some dumb reason, decided to ditch this. The film has a lot of color, which gives everything a lot more life and gives this film a unique look. It looks terrible. I don't know how anyone could possibly say this movie looks good. If anyone says The Suicide Squad looks good, then they're just being dumb, okay? They probably think a movie like Blade Runner 2049 looks good. And we all know that that's easily one of the worst looking films in all of existence. What made the original Suicide Squad so good was that every 10 seconds, there'd be some pop song that would play, which really makes the film way better. First three minutes, there are four songs. I loved how a lot of the time, the songs would feel out of place and would just break the tension in the scene. In the James Bum movie, for some stupid reason, they decided to only use songs at certain parts of the movie, and the songs fit with the scenes themselves and didn't feel out of place. That's so stupid, why would anyone do that? Playing music that feels out of place every 30 seconds will always make for a better movie. But as if Suicide Squad couldn't get any better and as if THE Suicide Squad couldn't get any worse. Suicide Squad is basically cut like a two hour movie trailer where scenes don't really start and end. The movie just sort of goes from scene to scene without any of the scenes flowing in together properly like you know a normal movie. This is because the movie was edited by a trailer house. A lot of the scenes are shortened in the movie. Like this scene was clearly meant to last longer but they cut it down. This means that the story and characters can't be fleshed out as much as they could have been because the movie is constantly cutting to another scene. I love everything about it. I love that a trailer house edited the film. I love that scenes don't really start or end. And I love how choppy the editing is. I also love this random neon that's just thrown into the film to make you think it's fun. I love it. Reason number 54 for why Suicide Squad is the greatest film ever made. In The Suicide Squad, the scenes have a clear beginning, middle, and end. Nothing feels choppy, which allows them to flesh out the characters, which sucks. I just hate it when the movie feels the need to have stuff like complete scenes, you know, and editing that isn't a total mess. I mean, could you imagine if Suicide Squad had smooth editing? Ugh, I know, I know, I know, it's terrible too. Thank God that didn't happen. So one of the best things about Suicide Squad is its story. I mean, when we were talking about a movie as good as Suicide Squad, everything is amazing, right? But the plot is especially amazing. So the Suicide Squad is started by Amanda Waller because what if we had a Superman-esque threat again? 
We totally need Harley Quinn with her baseball bat. She can definitely stop him. It makes total sense. I love that there's a huge amount of exposition in the first half where each character gets like 30 seconds of exposition, which definitely gets you to like the characters. And they throw in again some text, some neon to convince you that the movie's funner than it actually is. I love it. It's fantastic. It's great. Show, don't tell. That's the rule, right? Wrong! Tell, don't show is obviously better. That's why the plot is so good. The new movie, for some dumb reason, decided to show us stuff, but not tell us, you know? That's just bad storytelling. Why can't the characters just tell us what's happening instead of finding out organically? That's why a movie like The Last Airbender works and why the Avatar The Last Airbender show is so bad. Then the second half, the characters go and save Waller and stop a big laser in the sky. The characters are barely developed, they barely feel like a team, and nothing ends up making a lot of sense and that's why the movie is so good unlike the garbage sequel where they feel the need to have the characters grow organically and have the characters feel like a team through like normal scenes through them bonding you know gradually i think that's stupid it's awful it's reason number 578 for why suicide squad is so much better than the suicide squad a good movie needs memorable characters, and Suicide Squad has this in spades. You got Slipknot. Don't tell me you don't care about Slipknot. Slipknot is quite possibly the greatest, most well-developed character in all of cinema. He's the guy who can climb anything. Can anyone else climb anything? Can Superman climb anything? No. When he died after trying to escape the movie because it's so bad, wait. <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, when he died after trying to escape, after having like three minutes of screen time, I cried for days and days. I mean, I'm still not over it. What does the Suicide Squad have, huh? Cleo, a character who you find out organically had a rough upbringing, who loses her father, and because of that becomes the rat catcher. Polka Dot Man, who you find out was abused by his mom and who ends up trying to become a superhero and ends up saving the day and dying. The film is just filled of characters like this, just terrible characters who you don't like because they spend time getting you to care about them and root for them. Let me ask you something. Does The Suicide Squad have a character as interesting as Katana? This is Katana, she's got my back. Does it have the greatest Joker of all time, Jared Leto? Jared Leto's Joker is so good. Unlike Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix's terrible Jokers, Suicide Squad just has the best Joker of all time. I felt so much for these characters. They're easily the greatest characters in cinematic history. Unlike The Suicide Squad, which, you know, has the worst characters in cinematic history. And if you say otherwise, then you're just a hater and you like bad movies. I think we can all agree that whenever a studio interferes and alters a project, it's always for the better. It never ever makes a movie worse. Not once has it ever made a movie worse. Not once. After the backlash to Batman vs Superman and the dark tone to that movie, Warner Brothers saved the film, having the film edited by a trailer house, having large parts of it reshot. David Ayer said that the movie was originally meant to be like that teaser from back in 2015. That's so stupid though. Warner Brothers turned this film into a hilarious comedy and the movie has some of the best dialogue in all of cinema. Y'all jokers must be crazy. But they decided to undo their not mistake with The Suicide Squad. And look at what we got. We got a disaster. The Suicide Squad did absolutely nothing right. The movie feels like it has passion into it. And it feels like it's something from a director. You know, like someone poured their heart and soul into this film. And that's something I'm always against. I don't like it when films have heart to them. I don't like it when films feel like they're not being controlled by a committee. I always like it when films are controlled by a committee. That's why Ant-Man and the Wasp is one of my favorite films of all time. Because films being bland and uninteresting will always make for a better movie. So in conclusion, I think we all learned that number one, Suicide Squad has absolutely no flaws whatsoever. Unlike James Bum's train wreck of a film, which is the worst film ever made in history. If you disagree with me and you think that The Suicide Squad is better than Suicide Squad, well, then you're just an idiot and you're too stupid to like a film as complex as Suicide Squad. Like this video, comment, and subscribe to the channel to support people like me, people who 
like great movies like the Emoji Movie, like Justice League, and not trash films like you know, The Godfather, Citizen Kane, Lord of the Rings, you know, films like that that we all know suck. Anyways, the committee is always right, 100% of the time. Never watch unique films, always watch bland, uninteresting films. Anyways, this was a very serious video, as you could tell. There was no sarcasm at all. See you later, Bye bye